Let's talk about supercapacitors or ultracapacitors. This is a special type of electrolytic capacitor that has a construction that allows them to store much more charge than a normal electrolytic capacitor. This one, for example, has a capacity of 500 farads. The farad is the unit of capacitance. For comparison, this is a normal electrolytic capacitor and has a capacitance of 4700 microfarads. A microfarad is one millionth of a farad. This means that this ultracapacitor can store more than 100,000 times the charge that this capacitor can store. Well, one of the disadvantages of ultracapacitors is their low voltage. This one is rated at 2.7 volts and we can find also ultracapacitors of around 5.5 volts with not much more voltage than that. This normal capacitor is rated at 25 volts and we can find electrolytic capacitors of higher voltage such as this one which has a voltage of 450 volts. I'm going to run this little motor of the charge stored in this normal capacitor. I'm going to charge it to 6 volts and when we connect the motor we can see that the charge only lasts for a couple seconds. Okay, now I'm going to use our supercapacitor which is charged at 2.5 volts. The motor turns slowly because the voltage is 2.5 volts and in this case we charge this capacitor at 6 volts. However, we can see how the motor is still turning and in fact it will turn for about half an hour. However, batteries are still better at storing energy than supercapacitors. A AA rechargeable battery can store a total energy of around 9000 joules. Or supercapacitor can store an energy that is given by a half of the capacitance times the voltage squared and this equals an energy of 1800 joules. That is, the battery can store five times the energy of the supercapacitor. Supercapacitors cannot directly replace batteries for the following reason. A battery maintains an approximately constant voltage during its life. This rechargeable battery, when fully charged, has a voltage of approximately 1.35 volts. At the end of its life, the voltage has dropped to 1.1 volts, approximately. Capacitors, on the other side, have a voltage that drops almost linearly with charge. When fully charged, this capacitor has the rated voltage of 2.7 volts. However, when we have consumed half of the charge, the voltage drops to approximately half this value, or 1.35 volts. When we have 10% of the charge, the voltage is approximately 0.27 volts. We need additional circuitry to stabilize the voltage, such as a boost converter. An advantage of supercapacitors is that, unlike batteries, they can provide a lot of current. This battery, for example, if we measure the short circuit current, which is the maximum current it can provide, we can see that it is 2.5 amperes. In the case of this supercapacitor, it gives much more than that. In fact, I cannot measure the current with this multimeter because the maximum current that this can measure is 10 amps and the capacitor can provide much more than that. But let's make a little test to see how much current this capacitor can give. A 
As we can see, the wire melted immediately when we shorted the capacitor. This is size 20 AWG, so the current must be at least some 20 or 30 amps. In order to charge a supercapacitor, you have to apply a current to it. Just as the supercapacitor can discharge very quickly and output very high currents, you can also charge it quickly if you put enough current into the capacitor. As we can see, the capacitor is discharged. We have 0 0.03 volts and we will charge it using this power supply that can give a maximum of 5 amps. So let's try to connect and see how quickly is charged. We can see that we are charging at 4.5 amps and the voltage in the capacitor is rising. The capacitor will be fully charged when the voltage is 2.7 volts and the whole charging process takes about 3 minutes. But remember that we are using less than 5 amps. If we had a more powerful power supply, say one that has an output of 15 amps, the charging process will take just 1 minute. By comparison, charging one battery like this takes at least 1 hour to have a full charge. Supercapacitor technology is in constant development. In the future, they will be able to store the same amount of energy as batteries or even more and with a size comparable to batteries. Perhaps they will be smaller. Imagine charging your cell phone in a couple of minutes or even less than that.